Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Sound Fixation yet again. My name is Jetton Murtishi. I'm a film composer, audio mixing engineer, and today we are going to look at the Mac Studio M2 Ultra together with Reaper, and in particular, how they perform with Native Instruments Contact. If you haven't checked out our previous videos, check them out here. We did this exact same test on Logic Pro, Studio One, and Cubase. Please take a look at those videos and you can compare and contrast. What we're going to find out today is exactly how many instances of contact on separate tracks can the M2 Ultra together with Reaper handle and play at the same time. To find out, stick around. All right, guys, welcome back really quickly. If you haven't liked or subscribed, then you are exactly like me because I used to never do it either. But let me just tell you, for people that try to produce these videos, it actually helps for motivation. So please like and subscribe if you can. Helps me out. Let's begin. As always, we'll start with the tech specs. I'm operating on a Mac Studio M2 Ultra with 24 core CPU, 60 core GPU, 192 gigabytes of RAM, and one terabyte of storage. Reaper version here is version 6.81, which was released uh, July 4th, 2023. And if we look at the project settings, we got, we are recording at the 48K 24 bit. And our device is the Fireface UFX, which I'm using as our audio driver, as well as our audio interface. Um, really quickly, I want to say something about Reaper. Reaper is a remarkable DAW. Uh, at one point, I almost uh, switched. I was very, very close. I think there were some issues. This was several, several years back. There were some things that I wasn't working properly or I didn't figure out on film scoring. However, it's highly, highly customizable, which is amazing. But that also makes it a little bit uh, uh, difficult to understand all the things. These are my settings. I am no Reaper power users. Uh, thankfully, I did go on the Reaper forum and I got some great tips from some of the people. However, these are the settings that I chose. I did some limited testing um, and this is what we got. Thread priority, highest. Uh, audio reading processing threads I have at 24. Uh, anticipate FX processing. Allow live FX process, multiprocessing on 24 CPUs. I don't purport to know what all of these mean. However, I know that some of the, the users that, that know Reaper really well will probably know this. And please uh, feel free to let me know if you think something should have been changed. Uh, really quickly, I'm just going to switch through all of these uh, preferences. And those of you that have any interest can pause and take a look at them and comment. All right, guys, let's begin. Like our previous test on Logic, Studio One, and Cubase, we have the exact same 27 tracks with 27 instances of contact. Really quickly, we have uh, violin on LA scoring string, and then they're duplicated on cinematic strings, and this goes throughout the whole string section. We have some Hollywood winds, some Sam Charambone, we have some uh, various percussion libraries from East West, vibraphone, Glock, cymbals, uh, some Cineperk. Some Requiem Choir, True Strike Bell, and Spitfire Harp. Again, you can check out some of the other channels or the other videos uh, where you can see that in more detail. We are going to be looking at our performance meter here. And the cool thing about Reaper is it shows us the RAM usage as we begin duplicating these tracks. I know some of you in the comments have asked, how is the RAM usage going? Well, this is a good tell for us now. So we will continue referring to this as we duplicate these tracks. Right now, our rusting performance meter is at 4%. Let's press play and begin duplicating. Here we go. All right, guys, really quickly, RAM usage is at about 10 gigabytes right now, almost 11. Well, let's grab these tracks and let's duplicate them. All right, guys, we are at 54 tracks. Let's play and keep an eye on that meter.
All right, we reached right around 15% or so at 54 tracks, excuse me. Let's duplicate and this will bring us over 100. Here we go. All right, guys, 108 tracks. Let's see how she plays. Let me turn this down real quick. 108 tracks, here we go. All right, take a look at this RAM usage. Excuse me. Keep doing that, sorry. Uh, the RAM usage, we are at 20 gigabytes right now. Resting CPU is at 18%, and that's at 108 tracks. Let's get us over 200. Let's get to 216. Here we go. All right, guys, here we are. 216 tracks. Resting performance meter is right around 24%. RAM usage, 32 gigabytes. Real quickly, I've had a lot of comments, even in some of the forums, where they're like, well, well we're, we're duplicating the exact same um, uh, instances of contact, the same patches. However, I found that in both Logic, or um, excuse me, in all of the DAWs we have tested so far, every time we duplicate tracks, the RAM usage does go up. So how, however that wizardry works, I don't purport to know how the RAM usage and so on works, but what's happening is the RAM usage is going up together with the uh, track counts, okay? So 24% resting CPU. Let's turn this down real quick and let's see how she plays. Here we go. All right, so we got in the 40% range here. Again, at 32 gigabytes of RAM, that's 216. Let's get over 400 tracks. Here we go. All right, guys, 432 tracks. That's 432 instances of contact on 432 separate tracks. Take a look at this resting CPU. We are at 40%. Now, those of you that saw the Logic video, it was completely different. Uh, Logic had this amazing optimization where uh, at resting, it really didn't matter how many tracks we had loaded. It was at playing that the CPU. Uh, but, of course, uh, Cubase and Reaper are similar in this where the... Uh, resting CPU continues to rise as we add more tracks. RAM usage, guys, check it out. 57 gigabytes uh, right now. So 40%, 432 tracks. Let's see how she plays. Let me turn this down. And here we go. Whoa, guys, for a uh, split second there, we reached 92%, which is kind of high for 432 tracks only. Um, again, this, uh, this section of the uh, composition that we're using to test here, right at the end, that's when all the instruments are playing at the exact same time. And, of course, the CPU spikes. However, 92% is pretty, pretty high. 57 gigabytes of RAM usage, resting at 40%. Reaching 92% already at 430 tracks is a little bit scary. So now we are going to duplicate yet again, bringing us 860 tracks. Let's see how we do. Here we go. Thank you. 
All right, guys, we are back. 864 tracks. That's 864 instances of contact on 864 different tracks. Take a look at this, guys. RAM usage, 107 gigabytes. Now, what is scary here is take a look at that CPU resting. We are at 81% or thereabout. Uh, cool thing is that Reaper shows the range. So our lowest was around 6.5 and our highest at that time when we got here was 93%. However, I can already tell we are at 81. Here we go. It's at 81. I don't think this thing's going to play properly. And this is an issue that I reached out uh, to some of the forums. Now I'm going to press play, of course. However, before we do that is I'm going to grab one track from each of the instruments and I'm just going to bang out at the keyboard and see how it does. We did this with all of the other tests. Might as well do it with Reaper as well. Again, one track and they're all going to be armed. I think timpani I had two. Okay, symbols I know I had two. All right, Glock as well I had two. Vibraphone Trombone, Hollywood wins. Okay, LA scoring, cinematic, last cello, some viola, some viola, some violin. All right, guys, let's see here. Bear with me. All right, guys. So we have 27 tracks that are armed and I'm just gonna start messing around on the keyboard. Let's see how we do. I mean, it's playing. All right, well, it's playing. Let's deselect everything and let's see. We have, oh, it's taking too long. Let me grab this here. All right, here we go. Fingers crossed, 864 tracks. Reaper, press and play. Oh, let's turn this down. All right, here we go. Very, very crunchy. I don't know what's going on, guys. Reaper fails at playing 864, which, by the way, all the other tests, they have done it. Um, I'm not sure what's going on here. I will do this, though. Let's go to the uh, project settings. This is what I have here, and I'm reaching out to all the uh, Reaper power users because I know from personal experience... Uh, previously, over the last 10 years or so, Reaper has always been very CPU friendly. So in all fairness to Reaper, and in all fairness because I really don't use this, uh, haven't used it in quite a quite some time, but I know in the past that Reaper used to smoke the other DAWs in terms of performance. So I'm going to put this, these are my project settings right here, uh, and then I'm also going to pull up the the settings here and this is what i got for my audio i'm going to briefly click through all of these and reaper users go ahead take a look pause let me know if you want to change anything uh, but i would call this a failure at 864 tracks which leaves it at the lowest performing daw out of the other three that we've tested thus far so again, we tested, and you can check out the links here. We tested Logic Pro, we tested Studio One and Cubase, and today we did Reaper. Reaper fans, let me know what I'm doing wrong. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Look forward to seeing you on the next video. Let me know what else you guys want to test, which doll we want to test. I know that I do have a test coming up where we will bring down the uh, buffering to 64 uh, as opposed to 256. And we will also be testing some high usage CPU tracks. 
uh, in the future. But let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe. See you on the next one. Take care, guys. Ah!